It's important for a person to uh, search themselves and to see how God has made them, to see how God has gifted them, and um, to be that. Not to try to be something they're not, and uh, not to try to um, do things constantly and worry around trying to do stuff they can't do instead of just doing what God has designed them for. If I tried to use this to pry open my door if I got locked out, I haven't done that yet, but normally we resort to windows. Um, or if I tried to use this to fix uh, some kind of a little electronics, I'd be in for a fix. We'd be in real trouble. The electronics would be gone and I'd still be locked out if I used this to try to get in. Well, we in the body of Christ need to basically pray, seek what God has for us to do in the church, and obey. God wants us to know what we're supposed to be doing, and God desires for us to be effective inside the body of Christ. And if we pray and we ask Him, the Bible says He'll show us. Draw an eye to God and He'll draw an eye to you. God will show us what we need to be doing. Capital letter C, no part should reject another. Uh, verse 19, and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet one body? So if the whole body were just one member, there would be no body. We would just be a giant hand or something. It would be useless. A giant floating eye really is not effective. You need the whole body. So if the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the hand to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. You know, the eye can't say to the hand, since you're not an eye, I don't need you. If the eye doesn't have the hand, the eye can't do anything around itself. The eye needs the hand to manipulate the environment around it. The hand needs the foot to take it places. So the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. The crowbar can't say to the pliers, I don't need you, because you're not a crowbar. It's very important for us in the body of Christ to understand that God has made us all differently and to love each other as God loves us. If you were wondering what the verse we memorized today had to do with spiritual gifts, that's the point behind it is we're to love each other, we're to accept each other for who God has made us all to be in his body. God hasn't made everybody to be the eyes, to be the hands, to be the feet, but God has made us all as one body and we're all to love each other. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. So God has given the whole body together, so that way... um. Some parts may not look so good, it says. Some parts may be, seem better. But just because feet might sometimes be smelly and have strange looking toenails on them doesn't mean we don't need them. Without feet, we don't get very far. We need our feet. The hand might look kind of rough, might be a little beat up maybe, might have a few scars on it from doing stuff. But if you don't have a hand, if you don't have hands, you can't move things around you very well. It's hard to get around without hands. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. The Bible says in another place, Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that do weep. As a body, when one part is affected, all parts are affected. It's, um, it's really very important for Christians to realize that we're not lone wolves. We're not an island unto ourselves. And um, if we do something stupid and hurt ourselves, it hurts the entire body. And it's true. If we do something wise, it blesses the entire body. If we come unto sickness, it hurts the entire body. When God blesses us, the entire body is blessed. If you want to test this theory, you can take my crowbar after the service, stick your thumb here and pound on it. It kind of hurts a little bit when you do that. Take my word for it. Um, when one part of the body hurts, the whole body hurts. When you have a headache, 
you don't feel well all over except you have a headache. All of you feel as bad when you have a really good pounding headache. Mm -hmm. When you're nauseated, not to be disgusting, forgive me, I'm a nurse, but when you're nauseated and you feel like doing what nauseated people do, you don't feel well just because one part, only your stomach is hurting. It's not very big. It only covers about that much in your chest. But if you're nauseated, your whole being is badly affected. <coughs> now, um, sir, sorry. Please raise your hand. Oh, go ahead. Uh, <coughs> how important do you think it is for us to uh, discern our own spiritual gifts and also other people's, particularly like young people or our children? Well, for your own children, that might be one thing. Trying to look into the hearts of others can be a dangerous thing. Um, Unless, of course, it's like someone you're trying to work with and really counsel, that might be another instance. But uh, I'd be careful about trying to just look at someone and poke and say they have this ability or God's done this with that, unless God makes it abundantly clear. Um, of course, the Bible says, that The Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And sometimes what I see happening in, uh, like, this one church I used to go to is uh, there are kids who they thought were going to be like the... Uh, preacher boys and everything, and they ain't any of them doing anything for God these days. They were supposed to be like this uh, spiritual cream of the crop. They, they, I think folks kind of pumped them up and think they were better than anything else. And they wound up, because everybody thought they were so great, they wound up, I think, doing nothing. The last I heard from them, they aren't doing anything for God, unfortunately. So I think it's uh, something to be very careful about. Sir, now in my... I believe the answer is this thing found in John... Uh, 317, you know, the son of uh, uh, God don't send his son to condemn the world, you know. Uh, we can be judgmental, all this. Uh, if we pry into the what they're thinking, or uh, this is why you say it's so dangerous about that. You can pry into people's, and you can minimize that person uh, uh, spiritually and handle that person. Even you might share with that person also. So God himself, you know, then came to condemn, but to set men free, you know. So, I just want to point that out. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, um, now in yourself, though, um, I think it'd be important to try to find out what God has, through His Spirit, empowered you to do. Pray for what God wants you to be doing with your life, and uh, and do it. But, um, for sake of time here, this next section, let me skip through fairly quickly. Um, Oh, one part I meant to mention. We ought not to like, in the body of Christ, we ought, to like, ought not to like some better than others. We ought not to be a respecter of persons. Classic example of this is in James chapter 2. It says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly, so uh, someone comes to your church, with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou here, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then become partial in yourselves, and become judges of evil thoughts? We ought not to like somebody special just because they're rich, as is the example the Bible gives, or for whatever other reason. We're not to be respecters of persons inside the body of Christ and give someone some kind of honor because they have power or because they have money or because of anything else like that. If we do, uh, we become partial in ourselves and we're the judges of evil thoughts, the Bible says. We ought not to treat anyone special in the body of Christ because they're rich or because for any other reason. Every member of the body is valuable, whether it's a poor member of the body of Christ, someone who has to uh, work drudging labor for his living, or whether it's somebody who drives Rolls Royces, it doesn't matter. No one's more special than anybody else. And honestly, the rich people, it says in James chapter 5, tend to be pretty much against us anyway. And that's the truth. It says, uh, you know, your riches are corrupted, your garments moth-eaten, your gold and silver is cankered, the rest of them is a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fired. You have heaped treasure to yourselves for the last days. Um, sorry, I missed verse 1. Go to now, you rich men, and weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. We ought not to focus on somebody and be a blessing to them just because they're rich. Because if a person is rich in this world only, there's nothing good for them. And um, the, uh, 
Roman numeral three, God sets different people in the body. It says now.